G'day YouTubers, Here's two projects I want to introduce you to. One is a storage heater for winter for storing excess uh, solar power and the other is um, how to reduce the load from dishwashers and washing machines by using solar water feeds and a thermostatically controlled solar uh, mixing tap and I'll take you through those in a sec. Right, these are my two uh, appliances that uh, are the next uh, project. Uh, both of these devices um, draw cold water only, there's no hot water feed. Um, only the real top end Bosch products seem to have a additional hot water feed. So I want to pull water from my solar water heater instead of using um, my inverter and batteries to generate the power. Um, although these machines do have cold washers or a 30 degree wash, um, with ambient water temperature coming in 10 or 15 degrees, you still need to take it from 15 to 30, and that uses about 2 kilowatts of power. Dishwasher minimum uh, is 45 degrees, so um, you're using a lot of solar power to use the in, to heat the water as opposed to the pump, which runs uh, probably about 180, 200 watts. So by tapping into my solar geyser, I should be able to supply the core uh, water at a reasonable temperature so there's minimal amount of heating needs to be done and that's saving my batteries. This device is absolutely essential if you have uh, solar hot water heating. Um, it's a timer, shows you the thermostatic uh, temperature of the middle of the hot water cylinder and then you have a range of programs that allow you to choose when um, the device will actually come on. You can manually override um, and when you set, you can preset the temperature at which the uh, grid will actually click in. Um, currently, I'm already 11 degrees above that. And then you can decide which time. So basically, you can set that at 5.30 in the morning, if the temperature is below 50, then it will click in and top up. Without this, you would just be simply having a hot water tank full at the start of the day and the solar can't do anything. So even at the end of the day, after a couple of showers and even a bath, there's still surplus hot water, which I want to utilize to preheat the washing machine and dishwasher. This is the thermostatic valve that uh, I eventually found through a local supplier, hunted all over the web, uh, found a number of these, but couldn't find one locally, sometimes called um, TP valves or temperature controlled valve. This one has a... Uh, uh, hot in, uh, cold in, and puts out about 50 degrees mixed, thermostatically mixed uh, biomechanical, biometallic valve internally. You can also adjust the temperature. This one I'll preset to 40 degrees as I don't want my appliances to have excessive amounts of heat as I will be feeding hot water into the cold water feed. And uh, once this is all configured, then I will give you the results of the experimentation. Not, uh, not the cheapest thing. This one, uh, about... Um, so, uh, six, 50, 50 odd US dollars, uh, 650 South African Rand, and there is a 22 millimeter and 15 millimeter version, and I'll be using this to tap into the water supply and then feed into. So this is a typical South African plumbing setup. You have the waste uh, in the top uh, corner there, and a single cold water feed going into this uh, very small rigid uh, pipe into the back of the the appliance with the stop valve um, at the top. So I will be teeing into this and creating a feed for both the washing machine and the dishwasher using my thermostatic valve. This is my 20 year old solar water heater panel. I bought it from a deceased estate for 250 Rand, $25. Uh, it doesn't even have glass in it, it's Perspex. Um, it's not particularly efficient but it's quite sufficient for my requirements. I heat 250 liters of water, uh, only really ever use a bit of top-up grid probably three months of the year. Um, the way that I installed this is I took my existing hot water cylinder, raised it up in the roof, so this is purely gravity fed. The water just heats up, goes into the bottom of the, or into the top of the, um, hot water cylinder and gravity uh, feeds it round. I really, really recommend wherever possible avoid using pumps, valves, uh, microcontrollers. A simple thermosiphon system will be uh, absolutely 
first class. The only consideration is if you live in a very cold climate, obviously you've got to be careful of uh, things freezing up. But here in Cape Town, it never goes below freezing really. And uh, this thing just works like an absolute charm. In fact, the best return on your investment that you'll get uh, heats up your water from the sun before you do anything else. Right, this is a, an economy uh, 45 degree wash. Uh, you'll see that uh, this wash is actually pulling 2.16 kilowatts. Um, and as soon as the water's heated, I'll show you that that drops down to about uh, 80 or 100 watts while the pump is running without the heater. So if I can preheat this water, I can uh, hopefully reduce this amount of current uh, considerably. Okay, so there's the about 60, 70 watts uh, with just the pump running. Um, so perfect for solar, um, but of course you don't want that heater. So only. Uh... Okay, so um, the first uh, little water's been pumped out. Uh, it's refilled again, uh, and now it's on the second um, rinsing cycle, heating up the water again. Obviously, to dry the plates. Um, it has to heat that water up, otherwise uh, you're going to have uh, soggy plates. So these are efficient machines compared to dish, manual dishwashing, um, but they do use a lot of energy uh, for to heat the water. And if you've got hot water, then they're incredibly efficient. So um, let's see how we go. Okay, so just downloading the data from the logger. Um, so I can work out the total consumption of that wash. I'm um, just pulling that in from uh, via USB from the Okay, so here's a and Not a very scientific summary because I do have uh, the kettle on the same Circuits that I've just used to do this test. So there might have been a cup of tea made Mrs. Uh, responsible for that, but if you have a look here um, Approximately 300 watts there, kilowatt hours, at, and 490. So call it 5, 6, 7, 8. Point 0.8 of a kilowatt over that hour um, is the consumption of the dishwasher. So here's the final installation. Cold water feed coming in the top, hot water feed coming in the bottom, and the takeoff for the washing machine. I'm going to put a T-junction there for the dishwasher as well, is the feed. And then I've plumbed in a uh, copper pipe with a stopper tap that goes up into the roof and that uh, is plumbed into the geyser. Uh, one thing to be aware of is you need a balanced feed. My first uh, connection uh, I was using mains pressure on the cold feed not realizing it wasn't balanced and it was forcing the water up into the hot water system and around and uh, obviously that's no good so it's now supplied by the same pressure balance system on both sides absolutely essential if you're fitting one of these valves uh, and this is preset to 40 degrees so it will be supplying the washing machine and dishwasher with preheated water and i'll do a final test on the current reduction uh, in consumption <laughs> 